Welcome to today's episode of the Youth Series. Today we are unpacking the benefits of good nutrition for our youth. And I'm joined by Kala Poo, an expert dietitian, who's going to really share some great insights that will empower the youth in terms of the benefits of good nutrition. Um, Kala, I must tell you, I've got two daughters who have benefited from my cooking for all these years. And I don't think they actually realize mm. that it was an effort for me to actually make sure that there's a nicely prepared meal, nutritious meal for them every day. But you know, once they left the house, they had to start thinking about everything that they eat and everything that they eat has to be prepared by them. I think the information that we're gonna be sharing here today is gonna help both the parents and also the students uh, to try and really um, prepare healthy meals for themselves, you know, and you know, in, with the student life with tight budgets. Maybe just to start off, uh, just give us a sense of why nutrition is important when you're a university student. A healthy diet plays a very big role in your health and well being. And those are two of the cornerstones of making success of your mm -hmm. student years. So a healthy diet is critical to keep front of mind. I know there's, it's a very big transition period, moving out of the house, yeah. having to feign for yourself. But there are things that parents can do before mm -hmm. the transition happens mm -hmm. that can really set their mm -hmm. kids up for success. And then there are some tips that we can also unpack for students to do when they are on their own. They're experiencing all of these pressures and demands on their time, demands on their mental well-being. So mm -hmm. in a nutshell, a healthy diet really plays a big role in health and well-being. Thank you so much, Carla. You know, the way I view it, I view it as so diet for cognitive functions. Mm -hmm. So I want to perform well. I need the energy. I need to be there. I mean, I need to be attentive. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if I don't, I've not eaten well, I'll be sleepy. I'll be not, I'll be sluggish. I'll be slow. So that's where diet plays a role. But then there are other aspects around the immune aspects of, mm. of diet and how they boost our immunity if we, if we consume good, good foods. Um, maybe let's unpack a bit of that and also we'll touch on, on the mental health benefits of, of a good diet. Yeah. I think in some cases, a student diet's almost notorious for being very energy dense, very focused on fast foods, ultra processed foods. So there aren't a lot of nutrients in that kind of diet. What they need to sustain energy levels throughout the day to make sure they're protecting the immune system, they need a nutrient dense diet. And that is a healthy diet. So if we think about what we mean by that, nutrients, you find that in fresh fruits and vegetables, minimally processed foods, Think about fiber in your starches as well. So brown rice, um, whole wheat pastas and breads. You want lean proteins that you either find in lean animal proteins or plant-based sources and the healthy types of fat. So when we talk about a nutrient-dense diet that's healthy and very important for students, those are the kind of foods that they need to think about including. I'm smiling and I'm thinking <laughs> they're thinking yucky, whole wheat pasta, mm. brown rice, that doesn't sound so exciting mm. for the students. Yeah. So, and, and I mean, I think that's yeah. how, you know, they, they then uh, default uh, to, to the chips, fried uh, chicken yeah. and, and all the other stuff that is not healthy. So mm. maybe let's unpack some of the, of the foods that you can say to the students. Please mm. do little of this maybe once in a while mm. and do more of this. I think the first thing is that it does start at home. Food preferences the what gets modeled at home. So mm -hmm. maybe just to address the parents in the first part of this answer, mm -hmm. what you model at home, kids will do as you do, not as you say. So if you start by modeling, having a varied diet, having access to healthy snacks, mm -hmm. also empowering your kids before they leave the house to be able to cook their own meals, mm -hmm. nutritious, delicious meals, helping them understand how do you put a meal together, mm -hmm. that will demystify a lot of it and already set their preferences mm -hmm. toward healthy options mm -hmm. and also help them by knowing what healthy diets look like to figure out what that looks like on campus for them. Because the context is changing, but if their habits are solid, that will help them find their way easier. I don't think we can be unrealistic and expect a student to cut out all the mm. junk food. But mm. if you set them up with that basis, it'll um, really help them with that adjustment. Mm. Then specifically with students, it's going to be so individual, so I'll maybe talk on a few things. It depends on the, the student and how much skills they have to prepare their own things. If you have access to a fridge, something like overnight oats, 
Mm-hmm. You can just grab the breakfast in the mm-hmm. morning, add mm-hmm. some nuts to it, and you're out the door on the way to class, you can eat it. Mm-hmm. Things like that are really important. Mm-hmm. I've also seen some research and anecdotal evidence that the majority of the meals that kids eat can actually be snacks. Mm. So what kind of things are you snacking on? So we spoke about fruits, Mm. um, dried fruits, fresh fruits, are there markets around the university where they can make an outing of it with their friends? Mm. Bringing in the social aspect and the community aspect Mm. of it as well, Mm. Um, getting your friends involved, cooking for each other if you can cook, because when you cook home-based meals and share that with people, it tends to be healthier Mm. than eating out. Mm. So in terms of the skills and the habits that you form at home and bringing that into the university, it's going to look different for people. Mm. Um, But I think having the skills and the knowledge will help you adapt it in Mm. your own situation. Mm. No, that's quite amazing. Mm. But I think we spoke about a tight budget and there's Mm. always this perception that, you know, when you think about good, healthy eating, it's costly. Mm. Can, can students afford uh, this type of, of diet that you are descri- mm. describing right now? I definitely think so. It comes down to the food choices that they're making, and that's where the variety comes in. Mm. So I mentioned local markets mm. um, that are often cheaper than what you find in stores. Also rely on things like tinned food, mm. tinned fish, tinned tuna, they're not that expensive and very important nutrients in there. If we're speaking specifically about students that need the brain power, mm-hmm. um, things like omega-3 that you'll find in that tin fish is very mm-hmm. important. Mm-hmm. So focusing on those kind of proteins. Mm-hmm. Um, legumes as well, lentils, peas, chickpeas, the unsung heroes. There are ways to transform that using spices, mm-hmm. um, incorporating mm-hmm. it into existing meals. They're really cost effective and they are very nutritious. There's Mm. fiber, proteins, lots of vitamins and minerals. Mm. So if the kids know how to use those, they're familiar with those kind of foods, Mm. they can incorporate that. Mm. Um, It really helps Mm. in terms of the um, quality of the diet. And then other ways that they can think about um, the cost constraints is to batch cook. So when they have, if they are able to cook, they have access to um, kitchen. And batch cooking and freezing that in single serving so that they can just pull that out. Mm. We always go with the path of least resistance. Yeah. So planning a little bit, prepping a little bit in advance will really stand you in good stead and set you up for success. If you focus on having healthy um, snacks with you, popcorn that you make at home, very cost effective as a snack, mm. peanuts, um, dried fruits or fresh fruits, those are the kind of snacks you should be thinking of carrying with you. Um, peanut butters or nut butters are also really um, good sources of Mm. healthy fats and protein. Mm. So putting that on a sandwich, Mm. um, excellent snacks to take with you throughout the day. So Mm. a healthy diet doesn't have to be very expensive. Mm. You just have to plan properly and make sure you're relying on the right kind of foods. No, that's awesome. In fact, I was uh, speaking to my do- one of my daughters and I was saying, you know, just making a quick smoothie in the morning. Mm. You know, you put your fruits, you put your oats in there, blend yeah. quickly, grab and you can, you know, mm. have your smoothie on the go. And I mean, it's good stuff that's in there. And it's, yeah. it's good for, for brain power and also just for good mm. energy levels. And also, for that immune system because we don't want them to be sick you know there's no yeah. time to be sick <laughs> you need to be studying you yeah. know and you need to be getting mm. there and i mean we're getting now into exam season soon and mm. you know i think these tips are going to be quite important and i mean during winter when they're writing exams and there are all these many bugs that are floating around so you yeah. need to have that immune system that is really prepped for for to be quite resilient during this time mm. but let's maybe touch on mental health uh, because I think the high pressures in the university environment are such that, you know, if you're not eating well and you've got all these stresses, mm-hmm. you can you can actually feel overwhelmed by many things because, you yeah. know, it is such a big environment. And for most of the kids mm-hmm. who are moving into that space have never left home and they've always been protected in a way, you know, everything mm-hmm. was done for them, rightly or wrongly, <laughs> by parents. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, it becomes uh, quite tricky then to, 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 to students in terms of the support that they require to have good mental uh, well-being and, and also to function properly and deliver on the marks that we all are looking for. So important. And there are so many ways in which nutrition and mental well-being um, interact with each other. So we know that when we are stressed, we tend to make poor choices. We grab the energy dates, the quick snacks, the junk food. 
So we know that that pathway, stressful situations lead to a poor diet, mm. but it's also well established that eating the right kind of foods, focusing on nutrients or having a nutrient dense diet can impact and benefit depression mm. and anxiety. Mm. And this is for many reasons. I think we're still trying to figure out all the ways in which that impacts, but it's your gut microbiome, it's inflammation, oxidative stress in the body. So there are so many pathways that are impacted by what we give it. If mm. we give it nutrients, um, it benefits those pathways. If we're eating a lot of refined foods, a lot of processed mm. foods, it exacerbates the mental health. Mm. So I think that understanding that it works both ways is really important. So that you also surround yourself with healthy foods, healthy options, um, to try and mitigate some of those effects. Wow, thank you so, so much, Kala. I think we touched then on the benefits of good nutrition, mm -hmm. on cognitive, cognitive function, on, immune, on the immune system strength, and mm -hmm. also on the mental health aspects. So just in, in closing, what are your final tips to both the parents and the students um, around what they can do to actually go on this uh, nutritional path that you've just described? I would definitely say get comfortable with making your own food. So to the parents, give your kids that opportunity to learn how to be self-sufficient in the kitchen, how to put a nutritious meal together. Um, focus on the kind of foods that you are buying. Plan ahead a little bit. Make sure that the snacks you have, the closest thing that you have to grab needs to be a healthy snack. Put temptation out of the way. Mm -hmm. And then for the parents and maybe for the students to an extent when it comes to self-talk, focus on the things that you should be adding to your diet not what you need to restrict or limit. Um, we find that when it comes to behavior change and habit forming, um, do what you can within your context, make it small. You don't have to apply all the tips we shared today. Think about how it applies in your context with your child, with your um, class schedule, with mm -hmm. what you're able to do and start making small changes and build on that. So I definitely think um, just being aware of those few points will really help someone thrive at university. Wow, wow, thank you so much. That was really insightful. So please join us again um, for our next episode where we unpack the impact of mental health on the well-being of our students.